Hello and welcome back to the Farmcast. We're here at the Legacy of the Plains Museum in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. I'm sitting here with Troy Randall doing another episode of our improving technology and we're going to be focused on the Starfire 7000. So I know there's some questions and concerns about a uh, TikTok we've had on this channel about a uh, mower with a receiver on it. Well, I'm not real sure why other than I guess because you can have auto steer and GPS on a mower without a mower. And I just want to ask Troy here, what, why did we do that? And what are we showing when we put a receiver on? Well, it's a mower of the future. That's it's the mower of the future. Well, everyone wants auto track on their mower, so. It, yep. No, so that, there's a video floating around. That, of course, yeah, it's got a, yeah, this Gen 4 display on it. It's got a receiver on it. It's got a AT on it, but that's mainly for, just to kind of show, utilize and show off the technology we have on a small platform. Uh, we kind of use it as an outreach for local schools to kind of show them, you know, what this technology is, get it in their hands, show them what it can do, get them excited about it. So just kind of a kind of a uh, overkill of a lawnmower to to show off you know how the same components that we have in our large machines for operating out in the field we put on a little lawnmower to kind of do the same thing and let let people interact with it you know drive it around see how it functions just like it would on a large machine so and it would function as a tractor would so if, if you had yep. <laughs> the means to get all that stuff you could mow your you could mow your lawn hands free right yep. so and we do have some people that you know, yeah actually yeah. want to you use do, auto you track on the lawn even do, yep. Right? Yep. so <laughs> yeah hey if you got the technology use it so. as well today we got the john deere sf7000 troy what do we got here that we get special with this so this is our brand new starfire 7000 it got released over over a year you go officially then we started seeing them show up here oh, halfway through 2023 luckily so i think it's kind of picked back up when we started getting receivers again but this is john deere's latest and greatest mm -hmm. receiver to add to the lineup so it pretty much builds on top of what we had with the starfire 6000 this makes it that much better a little bit so of course we got kind of newer newer hardware um, faster pulling time better accuracy accuracy, um, better SF1, a little more accurate with things like that. But the biggest selling point of this is the new correction level called SFRTK. So with that, in the past we had with the SF6000, we had what we called SF3 and that kind of built upon what we had way back when called SF2. But now with this new SFRTK, like I said, it builds upon that and we get pretty much satellite based RTK. And as of right now, deer is claiming up to five plus years of repeatability. The only reason is that because they've only had five years to test it. So they don't know, maybe next year will be six years. It might be seven years after that too. So uh, you're going to get that uh, sub inch accuracy um, year after year without any kind of need for a RTK radio, a base station, anything like that. It's just pretty much all localized within the receiver and pulling straight off the satellite so no matter if you're in flat ground you're up in the hills you're in spots where you couldn't get rtk before uh, you're going to be able to pull in if you got a clear view of the sky you can get that sf rtk signal right along with your sf signal and utilize that sub inch accuracy all year long year after year and be repeatable so it gives you a lot better a lot better flexibility for guys in certain areas or mm -hmm. looking to upgrade and and you said that this replaces sf3 basically this is not capable as a of SF3. Nope, nope. So that's uh, along with what Deer's kind of doing on the G5 plat or platform. They're starting to simplify things. That's the same thing they're doing with this uh, by a long shot. So no longer do we have SF3 ready activation. We don't have um, an RTK activation we need. Um, right out of the box, this comes with SF1. We can get the SF RTK subscription, throw it on there, boom, ready to go. There's no more ready activation for SF RTK. So right out of the box, you can yeah. throw, a, throw a one year subscription on there and be ready to go. So yeah, you're talking about massive savings right out of the box. Yep. Yeah. yep. So it's a great option for guys that want high accuracy, um, right out of the gate for a low entry cost. So before it was probably around, you know, give or take, if, if you had to go buy a new RTK receiver out of the box, brand new uh, with the activations, with the radio, we were looking at almost close to $13,000. So that's a pretty yep, hefty investment to get hefty, to RTK, yep. not alone the uh, network cost. If you're going on to a network, if you're building your own base station, you have to double that to get a receiver with all the correct activations to be a base. And there's a lot more hassle with that because you have to you know, connect to that base station, set mm -hmm. up that base station. So this is pretty much the simple way to do it. Uh, very, very easy way moving forward to get RTK without all the hassle of 
of what we're used to with radio-based RTK. But one thing, if guys still want to use radio-based RTK, that it's still is an option board. for these. Uh, we still do have to have that RTK activation on there. So we can, so say if a guy does have a 3000 receiver, has a 6000 receiver, we can get an upgrade activation. We can move that RTK activation from the 3000 from the 6000 to the 7000 and then slap a radio on the back, whether it be 900, uh, 450, and still utilize that local radio based RTK signal if they want to. Or we can skip all that, go SF RTK, and then just simplify things mm -hmm. too. So it's give you gives us some options there. And guys that are currently have 6000s, that is, if, if there were an SF3 6000, they had to do that radio activation. You can get you can upgrade to this without breaking the bank, right? It's something yep. that's pretty easy to do. So yeah, yeah. So definitely, if someone if someone wants to add add another receiver, it's definitely a lot more cost effective to look into SFRTK depending on what their operation is. Um, however, as of right now, one thing we want to make sure we're not doing is mixing our signals. So we don't mm -hmm. want to have a uh, we don't want to have numerous SFRTK receivers out there and numerous radio based RTK receivers at the same time that because in that same order exactly or within the same operation yep. things like that just just to be safe for now the reason is this kind of uses a different what deer calls datums so you use different reference stations uh throughout the u.s and different ways to calculate that sfrtk correction and beam it back down mm -hmm. so so say if you did have a radio based rtk receiver and then you utilize the sfrtk signal you might see some shift in your boundaries and your guidance lines so that's why as of right now if you're looking at using this you want to either go pretty much full sfrtk or stay radio based rtk for now uh, just so you don't see that shift especially gotcha. if you in your operation especially in springtime when you're going to be strip tilling if you're going to be planting you don't want to be have you know radio based rtk on the strip tiller and then sf RT on the planner, I, yeah, don't do that because right. you're probably going to have a uh, possibility for shifting and it's not going to turn out good. But um, we had, do have had a few guys that have tried it out. Uh, possibly if you're really in a pinch, maybe you could put maybe. SFRTK on the combine because you're just trying to follow those lines. You're not really making new lines. So in a pinch, um, actually one scenario, I do have one guy testing that this fall right now. So just to kind of give it, just to try it out, they have um, a 6,000 with radio RTK on one combine and an SF 7,000 with SF RTK on the other combine just to kind of try things out. I kind of told them they'll just try it out for now. Yep. See how, yeah. <laughs> Cause I have yeah. guys that are doing this with sprayers and you don't yep, need yep. to be in yep. check or with a sprayer. Yep. So it all kind of depends on yep. the on the uh, comfort level of the of the customer too. And how, and how yep. much risk they're willing to take. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. yep, so exactly. So, but yeah, in a combine it's, you're pretty much already using what's already there. So. If there's a, yep. a willingness uh, to have a little bit of wiggle room there, and you're, most guys are already using Rosense too, so Rosense is already going to shift that line around to where it needs to be. So you're already kind of having to shift things around too. So, uh, but so far, my guy that is using it, he's zero, had zero issue with it so far. The SFRTK is lining up about perfectly with yep. the radio-based RTK. So, so good, good things to see there. So glad to hear yeah. that too. But I think the the fact that we're even having people consider mixing the signals is a good thing about how well this thing is priced. Yep, exactly. Right? So we're priced very competitively there. Yeah, and a good thing with this, like I said, with the G5, um, depending, moving forward with the G5 display, there was going to be some incentives with that G5 advanced license mm -hmm. and SFRTK. So depending on your operation, there could be cheaper ways to get SF, that yep. SFRTK uh, subscription along with the uh, G5 advanced license too, depending uh, where it is. Yeah, you can and, get it all bundled together, right? Yep. Display and, yep. and of course this is a universal right now, but we also do have, we'll have the uh, in integrated two and in certain machines coming out for 24 as well. So it looks identical is no same, but of course, sitting here, we're kind of missing the best part of this new receiver, which I kind of thought was kind of hoaxy to begin with, but these grab handles are actually, yep. I was kind of skeptical with them to begin with, but yeah. the first time I used it, I was like, hey, that's actually pretty it's nice. It's got those fancy go handles, makes it way easier to put it on top of yeah. the cat, actually, believe it or not. So especially when you're standing on top of a feeder house, hanging off the front of a tractor, it's gives it a lot, something a lot more secure to hang on to than just the front lip of a deluxe shroud right now. So definitely, definitely one win right there. So, and, and it makes it look cooler, so. And all the parts in here are actually replaceable, unlike some of our previous models, yep. correct? Yep. Yep. So about almost more than 20 replaceable parts within this between oh, the antenna components, uh, the shroud components, harnessing, things like that. So if you do happen to damage one before, we pretty much had just one part for the whole receiver. If you bust one thing, you have to get a whole new one. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. These are much more flexible, whether you, know, you lose one of these, you lose a screw, you crack your dome right there. And the nice thing about these two, uh, we're starting to see this with guys with SF mm -hmm. uh, 3000s and a lot much older receivers. That was kind of a whole 
yeah. dome within itself. Yeah. So once you crack that Sealed. dome, yeah. had some uh, something crack it, that would pretty much why it would wipe it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So this plastic piece, we're seeing that with the 3000s, with the new ones. I mean, that's just what happens with new plastic, right? It's, yep, yep. It's, it's been like sitting outside for 10 plus years in the sun, so it starts to fade, things like that. But yeah, these have much more options when it comes to uh, parts. So hopefully down the road, it makes things, if they do get damaged, it makes replacing yep. that much easier, so. And so what about radios? Do they, if you do add that radio RTK, is it the same radio they've been using? Yep, yep, we can still use the same, the same radios we have been, whether it be 900, 450, too. So, but uh, one thing we do suggest, I have started to see lots especially with my area um, guys have had rtk for so long i've seen some of those 900 rtk radios that are almost yeah. probably been around longer than i've been working here so they've they have date <laughs> codes from 07 08 09 on them and those are starting to get kind of kind of fidgety sometimes right. so sometimes they work sometimes they don't so if you do have one of those you might want to look at upgrading radios too if you're going with one of these but but any of those old old radios should work just fine with this new re re receiver as well so yeah use your common sense for that don't mix 2023 technology with 2000 exactly technology, yeah. so. <laughs> it might work but yeah it might get you by in a pinch but nothing more than that so one thing that's just de released here not too long ago is a even newer version of this or not so much newer but just a different version so this is the sf 7,000, but Deer just uh, is going to be releasing what they call the SF7500 here pretty soon. And I'm kind of here to put everyone's mind at ease. There's pretty much no functional difference between the two. The main difference is on the backside on Deer's manufacturing process, um, because we know the past couple of years getting receivers, getting components has been very difficult. And Deer realized this, and then they started to simplify things on the back end too. So this receiver is actually kind of a dual board design. There's kind of a power board and the main board. Um, the reason it was so hard to get components is because they one of those boards that power board was outsourced mm -hmm. to a different company there's kind of a bottleneck there so they had to kind of rely on that company they're constrained by that company to get components for receivers that's why it took so long to get them so now they've simplified that they've gone to a single board design pretty much all in the house um, they don't have that constraint anymore so when they did that they kind of had to re-engineer the insides of it so it's going to be oh, a different model number a uh, different software version for it so mm -hmm. we will have software for a 7000 you will have software for a 7500 but function wise the no exactly. difference yep. you're gonna have sf rtk sf1 they're gonna look the same on the display they're gonna fu function the same on the display so function wise absolutely no difference cost no difference activation is no difference is just gears trying to simplify things on the back side so that way moving forward we can get these back into integrated platforms and yep. tractors combine sprayers because Deer came out with the Integrate 6000, and we kind of had that bottleneck of components. Uh, we weren't able to get those, so they had to take them out, unfortunately. And then now we're actually starting to put them back in. And then with that, too, we actually will have an upgrade kit, a 7500 integrated upgrade kit coming out here um, early 24 as well, too. So if you do have one of those machines that was less receiver ready. ordered, yeah, less, receiver less integrated ready. receiver, unfortunately, we will have the option to get an upgrade kit to add an integrated 7500 to that machine as well. So that's going to be a cool new option to finally mm -hmm. get those machines that were supposed to have an integrated receiver back up to spec with an integrated receiver so and we have these on the shelf currently if you guys are interested in one of these we do have these in dealerships i think every single dealership has one so get with your local dealership if you are looking for one if you guys have any desire to see any of this tech in action we are going to be having the 7000 and the g5 that we covered in the last episode at the island grove event center in greeley colorado uh, march 20th and 21st if you guys want to get on there try with touch your hands you know use the use this handle a super handy handle um, or use the buttons on the display we can get that done for you so yeah come out and we're we'll happy to see all of you and let you guys give it a whirl so this was the farm cast with me and troy um, if you guys have any comments or concerns pop them down below drop us a like and thanks for tuning in